In the previous video, we took this simple search icon and made it more complex and overall more visually interesting, colorful and so on. And in this video, we're going to do the same with this icon. First of all, I'm going to start by creating a frame. To do that, I'm going to press F on my keyboard and then click once, which is going to create a frame that is 100 each right width and height i'm gonna rename this to home icon complexified and now we are ready to start assembling this icon um before we do that we just need to think about what's actually gonna happen right so uh, if you consider this icon obviously um it's a pictogram of a house there's like a door um this is of course the the roof um so i think what, what we could do is first of all i think we could make you know like a window we could do um, a door and then uh, the house itself actually right so this is basically just a sketch and i thought we could actually not only do um, an extension of the middle part like this but we could also do something like an extra line, extra arrow to do the rooftop, make it, you know, different color, for example. Um, that's something that I have in mind, just to make it more realistic. Okay, so that's probably the, the direction I want to go in. And um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Uh, let's just get into it. I'm going to press R on my keyboard and then click once again inside of the frame which is going to create a rectangle inside of that frame. Of course, this uh, square is not going to be as big as the frame, so I'm just going to make it smaller. I think I'm going to go for like 44, let's say, okay? Maybe even less, maybe like 40. Okay, so there's our square. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is make it like 28, perhaps 32, I don't know whatever looks best to you and um, yeah then what i'm gonna do next is actually duplicate this right so i'm pressing alt or option on my keyboard and then dragging this object um, and uh, i am going to press enter click and drag on the top part like this which is gonna you know extrude this middle part of um, of this icon of this shape sorry then i will select these two vertices and um, by simply clicking and dragging and by the way you can enter and exit this edit mode of a shape by pressing enter on your keyboard with this object selected so that's what i just did i'm gonna select these two remove very important actually i'm pressing shift backspace okay so this is going to create an extra side here because if i don't do that i'll just get this right without this connected bottom side so that's why i'm pressing shift backspace to get this shape over here i'm going to then adjust the size of this to about 40 times 16 i guess and um yeah, then I will probably just duplicate this again, remove the fill and add a stroke. I'm going to set this to center and then enter, click on the bottom line until it turns blue and then delete and then enter again. Okay, so I just removed the bottom part and just kept this as our roof, essentially. Um, I'm going to increase the thickness of the line, uh, which means uh, going over to this stroke panel over here and also making it larger like 50 to 20 something like that so we get uh, this right so the idea here is to get a separate object for the rooftop okay and then the front frontal part of the house itself <laughs> okay um i apologize to anyone who is educated in architecture for not using the proper terms um i am not familiar with them all right so you're gonna have to excuse me for that and uh yeah just basically i used the rounding of the endings and of the joints um as you can see if i switch between these two this is essentially what's gonna happen on the top okay so i want to make it smoother that works perfect. Um, next thing, please, let's do another rectangle. So Command D, 
with this selected which is going to create another rectangle on top of this uh this is going to be our door okay this is going to be our door i think we could then select it and select the rectangle behind that and do subtract selection right we get a nice little door um, then when we have our subtraction on the left side we can also move these shapes so it's you know it's basically non-destructive which means you can easily adjust your changes i think we're going to do a rather large door i think we're, we could go go for like i don't know like something like that for example and um, then i'm going to duplicate that and create a window um so this means that we basically are gonna get uh, like two holes let me illustrate that we get basically two subtractions right you can see that we do have um thanks to duplicating objects within the subtract folder within the subtract shape um yeah so next thing what we're gonna do is basically just examine what uh, proportions look best for um the distances from the sides or uh, like the height of the window the height of the uh, the door um i guess we could do like eight by eight no that's that's too small i think we could um do like this for example all right i think this is good um then we could adjust this main rectangle of course gonna be six from uh, these two objects and move this closer definitely purely um, about your personal preferences um, right so the next thing i'm gonna do is get this subtract element and then select this triangle and do union selection so that now when we do corner rounding you know kind of everything gets rounded so that's wonderful uh, i think that works well um yeah we could do one or two uh, we could also do the rounding on the roof um like this so that it's this part is smooth um i think that looks nice could do like six or seven something like that maybe a slightly less prominent line um, on the top maybe move that closer you know, like this i think that works yeah i think that works now i'm just gonna do a backup of this union left side i duplicated that and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this sharp again and then i'm gonna press shift e uh, command e sorry to flatten the selection so when you press enter you can then manipulate with individual vertices whereas if you press enter on this union you just get these individual shapes so that's something that we don't want to do because i want to be able to round each of these corners individually um, i would go for more rounding on the outside okay, so let's try four on these and then slightly less prominent rounding on the inside like two you know just um so that it's more rounded from from the outside i'm gonna make the door narrower i think yep i'm just you know experimenting maybe move it downwards okay yeah that looks solid so let me now turn this to white um sorry to gray whatever this color is to make it match and i think we could do some sort of a ground okay so i'm gonna create a rectangle and then drag it out across the floor make it slightly lighter maybe we could do also a little chimney over here so like a rectangle that i'm gonna modify maybe you know place it somewhere around here whatever feels best okay so i'm gonna do the rounding only on these top vertices and yeah i think it's now it's time to start adding some color okay we're gonna start adding some color now i think we could go for like white uh, on these as well so that's just gonna be all white of course the background is not gonna have to be you know it just can't be white so why don't we do some very comforting color like this green ish 
color, right? Something like that. And um, let's just keep experimenting with effects on this shape. So I'm gonna go to effects. I'm gonna do inner shadow and I'm gonna try and make it look a bit plastic, okay? So we're gonna have negative Y coordinates. I'm gonna sample the green color, increase the blur, maybe play around with the with the opacity of this effect, maybe with even the blur, which is gonna be like three, yes, yeah, could be. With this little ground element, we could do like again a radial gradient, which is two points. It's gonna go like this could be overlay then with the rooftop why don't i do a union and then just make it black and overlay is that gonna work well or is it not i don't think so let's keep that white and normal maybe actually let's turn these vertices sharp again so that the house looks more grounded right so keep it this way and yeah maybe let's add something into the background okay let's add something into the background so i'm going to create an ellipse then i'm going to press enter select this vert vertex and command click it to get this situation okay i'm gonna then command click it again actually and hold alt while i adjust you know these these curves um, I want to do a sort of a mountain in the background. So let's just experiment with what looks best. Again, white radial gradient in the background. This is going to be subtle, right? So we could do like, um, um, again, overlay with maybe reduced opacity on the, on the gradient. Um, we could do another like a hill somewhere around here so why don't i use another ellipse i'm gonna copy the gradient from here remove this fill and also move that into the background um actually paste that inside of the frame first okay move that into the background and um yeah let's also play with this point okay needs to be adjusted again so that it doesn't interfere with our house. Yep, I think that works. And we could, I think, move this a little bit upwards. So let's go for like this position, let's say. Adjust all of these accordingly, move them. I think that's really nice. You could copy the style, this inner shadow from this part of the, the house to this part of the house, um, just to make it you know, match. You could also use a rectangle that's gonna be behind the main house shape. That is gonna be this color of the background, but maybe darker, you know, just to differentiate it uh, from, uh, from the rest of the image. Um, yeah, I think that kind of looks nice. Um, yeah, maybe let's make the house bigger, shall we? Maybe let's try and make it a bit larger like this. I think that works maybe a bit smaller again, you know, just whatever feels right. Um, we could do like a, a bush right here, which means um, I think I'm gonna use a rectangle tool for that. So rectangle tool fully rounded with a similar style as these mountains. It's just gonna be more prominent. Um, yeah, um, let's make the gradient overall more prominent. That works, move that over here maybe. Duplicate that again, bring it, place it somewhere around here. I think that works well. I think these actually, actually, now that I look at it, these could actually be trees, you know, in the in the background. So let's duplicate, let's create a bunch of more of them. Um, these could be little trees. It's a very nice place for a house, a very relaxing atmosphere. Then we could even duplicate this over here just move that to the right all the way to the right to get this situation um yeah i think i think that looks that looks nice uh why don't i add something on the side of the house just to make it look more believable um i'm gonna make it white i'm also gonna of course add this effect just to match the appearance and the overall feel of this um I think I'm gonna round this corner. Could be some kind of secret door or maybe storage for something. I don't know. Um, 
Let's just see if we can make this work. Yeah, I think this is nice. And um, yeah, let's just reduce the opacity. We're gonna probably have to add a fill, then sample the fill from here. So like take this code, paste that inside of instead of the black, 100, move that behind the white and then reduce the opacity of the white color, right? So that we get something in between, but at the same time, so that it's not transparent. Okay, if that makes sense. Basically, just to create this, okay? Yeah, so let's just create one more tree over here. And um, why don't we try creating a little tree trunks? Again, rectangle, paste the style from this, okay? Keep the opacity reduced. And yeah, this is gonna have to be very, very subtle. So I think this is exactly what we're going for. Something like this, okay? Very nice. Let's just duplicate that over here. Okay, yeah, I think we're getting somewhere. I think we are definitely getting somewhere. Um, I think I'm gonna separate the chimney from the house, move that behind, behind the house, maybe try overlay, reduce the opacity. No, actually, no, let's not do that. I take that back, everyone. Maybe just make it smaller, I guess. Yeah, could be. Maybe we could even add uh, the classic, absolute classic sun. So why don't I add a really white ellipse? That's a white circle representing the sun. And to make it look more sunny, let's do a drop shadow with no Y coordinates. That's gonna be uh, white and it's gonna be rather blurry. It's gonna be prominent and it's gonna have a spread. Okay, now we're talking. Now this actually looks like a sun. Um, okay, let's reduce the opacity and yeah, yeah, let's actually place that on the left side. I think we could also do like um, a radial gradient on the background to make it more convincing overlay. Let's experiment with that. Decrease. Oh, move this. Okay. And I think we could make this wider, actually. So let's go for four. Let's go for four. Yep, I do enjoy that. Increase the rounding to seven. That works. Yep, I think this is it. Um, I'm going to round these corners. I'm going to do a similar dial. So let's try adding these strokes. Command C, Command V. Let's do rounding and more prominent strokes gonna be two yeah I think this works really nicely with the image so just to just to uh, reiterate what these actually are so these these strokes are radial gradients again right so there's the white one going from white to transparent from here set to overlay and then the black one going from the bottom right um, also I believe set to overlay and uh, then, yeah, that's it, set to two in terms of width. Um, this frame is gonna have a shadow as well. So let's add a shadow, let's blur it, let's make it green, as in the green that's on the image. Play around with the spread, the blur, the opacity. Yep, I think that works. And um, yeah, let's just add this on a white, whoops, no. Um, let's just add this on a white background to see what it looks like. Maybe let's reduce the shadow. All right. So again, similarly to the previous video, uh, we took a simple icon and we turned this into a more housey version of the house icon. I hope you learned something new in this video. Um, if you did, I would really appreciate you leaving a like. You can also check out the link in the description where you can download this from my store to support the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next one.